Hi guys, welcome back to Spoons and Spirits. So today I thought I would do a step-by-step multi-video process from log to finished spoon. Um, we'd start off with this video, the first one being about axing out your first spoon blank ready for carving. The next video will about all the, be about the knife work that we start with. And then the third video, finishing cuts. There isn't a lot on the internet uh, or on YouTube about finishing cuts, so I thought I'd do a great little video on how they're achieved, what they're for, how we get them, and the purpose really. And then the final video on finishing and oiling your spoons, um, how are the various processes. I've had a lot of questions lately on various methods of how to carve spoons, um, different tools you could possibly be using. I'll be talking through them uh, as we go and why I've chosen the tools that I use. But uh, yeah, so let's get started. So let's have a quick talk first before we start about tools, what tools I'm gonna be using um, and a variety that you could use, whatever's available to you. So first one is quite obvious, an ax. Uh, this ax I bought for a couple of Great British Pounds. Um, it was pretty rusted over, not very nice, but I cleaned it all up, re-edged it, got an nice sharp uh, edge on that as sharp as my knife it's very important for a carving axe to have an extremely sharp edge to it and also this axe is very thin which also helps with the carving process um, when using an axe to carve with with what we're doing here you don't have to spend too much money something like a Granfus Brooks uh, you're looking at 100 pounds or so to start with like I said this one has been my favorite since it was just a cheap little pickup and I love it. Um, it is my go-to axe. It's like a little, like an extra right arm for me. And you'll find that the more you look around for your axe as well, you'll find you just really adore one. Um, the next tool I'm going to be using is something to split my log with. This is an old machete found in my parents' garage that they gave to me. And I find it absolutely perfect for batoning wood, which you'll see. Uh, to get through like you would do with a bushcraft knife to, to cut through small pieces I do the same thing with this you could be using a fro you could be using an axe as well I would recommend something a bit more heavy duty something that's got a flat back on it not like my axe as you'll see here it's very rounded that would just damage my axe and I don't want to do that whereas this thing it's been beaten around I don't care what happens to it if it breaks it breaks but it's obviously taken quite a beating anyway uh, also going to be using a saw again you could use any kind of saw you can use a silky type variety like I've got that is just a cheap gardening saw um, but it does the job it cuts through wood very quickly um, you could use something like a proper silky you could be using a a normal carpenter's saw whatever really uh, as long as it works for you and that you can get a precision cut on it as well and you'll see why in a minute uh, the other thing if you use one or you or or you would like to try and use one something like a spoon template I find them really helpful it keeps me on the right track um, and I can keep referring back to it rather than freehand but some people much prefer a freehand spoon that is fine whatever you're ready for I personally I do like my uh, spoon templates um, and in a future video as well I will be showing you how I make my spoon, spoon plate templates and where I get them from as well and of course the last thing we need is a log so this is uh, a piece of bay that I'm going to be using a Loris, Lor Lorilus, Lorius Domestica, I think is the Italian name. But uh, yeah, just a plain bay. So it's going to be a nice pale wood. That's the freshly cut end there. So it's going to be a nice pale wood. Perfect for if I wanted to bake it or just have a nice bright white background. That's going to be a lovely wood. And I, it's one of my favorites to carve. It's a lovely wood to carve. Um, and then the only other thing is if I lower you down a bit a chopping block so this is just one I fashioned together again another future video coming up we will be doing how to build one of these they are very very simple you could just use a normal log um, but it's something that is soft enough so that if your axe goes into it it's not going to damage the axe but it's also strong enough that it's not going to go right through and end up going through into your knee so yeah something to chop on and we're all ready to go let's do this Okay, so let's first decide where we're going to be splitting this wood because obviously there's no point in wasting this. So, looking at that, you can see 
I put these down. I've got the center here. That's where you want to aim when you're doing, when you're carving a spoon. You also want to look at how much matter you've got on either side. So quite obviously, this is a very oblong shape, so I'm going to split it this way. And that gives me the most amount on this side, most amount on that side, so I can hopefully get two of the big spoons we're going to be carving today out of this. Uh, the spoon I'm going to be carving is a serving spoon. Um, uh, well, a serving slash cooking spoon. It's going to have a bit of a bowl to it so that you can serve up, but quite e equally a nice flattened edge so that you can use it for scraping into bowls with. So I want something that's going to be deep uh, so that I can get a nice bowl out of it. So that's the direction there. If I mark it on with my pencil just to show you, I'm going to aim for about that kind of line there okay so the only other tool I didn't mention was something to hit it with this is just a quickly fashioned little mallet out of an old piece of wood that was too knotted and horrible for carving with so I made this instead and all I'm just gonna do is grab my machete line it up and then just give it a good whack right through the middle And as you can see, that's splitting the wood straight away. That's going to tell me where the split is going. I'm not going to try and move it in any way. I'm going to let the wood do its thing. That will give me the strongest wood that will last the best. And with the batoning method as well, once you get in on the top, you start on the front and the back while holding it still with your other hand back here. And it slowly works it down. And so you've got your two halves. Okay. So, first things first, we're going to decide as well which half I'm going to use. So I'm looking around now to see for evidence of knots. For instance, in this one, we've got a little dimple there and a few dimples here, which means that as I go through the wood, chances are there is going to be some knotting there, which, although you can carve a knot, it's pretty tough so you ideally want to avoid it you also run the risk of that becoming a weak spot in your spoon as well knots quite often can pop out um, and lay as they dry and then leave you with a nice hole in your spoon so if your knot is in the bowl of the spoon it could very quickly turn into uh, a strainer rather than a spoon so to be honest these are looking pretty even and what they're doing, I know there's a big knot on the end here because it was a bit of a bugger to carve, uh, to cut through. So I think I probably we'll just go with this one here. Uh, this will go back into my storage, uh, my underwater storage for all of my woods, so it stays nice and fresh and I can use it again. Okay. So let's get the axe. Nice light axe this is. Um, not quite sure of the weight on it. It's again, it's a very old English, made in England axe. So I don't quite know the weight of it. Um, it's very, very light, nice and easy to use. Means my arm doesn't tire too much. Um, but again, I've got heavier axes. If there's something I wanted to take more off with, I can swap axes, but generally this is pretty good. First things first, I'm gonna take that pith line out there, the center of the wood. Again, as that dries, it's gonna be really, really foamy and thin and weak and it will just come out you could you could scrape it out with the end of a pencil um, once it's dry so there's no point in keeping it it's just going to cause more weaknesses so i'm just going to cut it out now i can also see i don't know if you can see it on the camera yeah there you go you can see little dark lines starting to come up on the wood. That's just residue from the tools. There's nothing to really worry about. Um, it's just a bit of residue from my cleaning of the tools, keeping them sharp. Um, it's nothing to worry, it just the tannins stain the wood. Again, nothing to worry about. Can really add to the character of it, which is quite nice as well. Um, and my chopping technique as well, if I go flat, straight on for you, I am just going up and down like that. I'm moving the wood with it. So. That's a, a bit of a technique to learn, but once you've got it, it makes it so much easier. And don't be afraid, the first time you do this, if you've never done it before, for your axe to go a little bit wild all over the place. It is practice. Start with these little cuts, and yes, it'll take time. Yes, it's a bit of a ball ache, but you'll get there. And then work up the wood 
when we get halfway. I'm going to swap the wood round because otherwise these little lovelies get in the way and I risk losing a finger because as I mentioned this is super sharp. Okay, that's the most of it out. We'll get the rest as we're carving. So as you can see, just as I predicted, getting a nice knot through there. So that's now telling me which end I want to put the bowl of the spoon, which is over here, which is not free. That's also giving me there a lovely little pattern that I will hopefully get something with. It's also worth mentioning now about the patterns you want on your spoon. So if you want, a nice rounded bowl on your spoon so that you see the laminations of the wood going around and around in a circle you want the bowl that way so you want to be able to eat that way with the spoon okay if you want it to semicircles on either side almost like a little gully in the middle there it won't be a gully obviously but it will have that look that there's a nice passage coming through then carve it this way Either way, we will use this to mark our template on. It just means that when we come to the side templates, we know which way round to angle it, okay? Again, what I'm now looking for is to see how straight that is. As you can see, we've got a little bit of a, little bit of a curve there. So I'm gonna try and even that out. Now that I know which end I'm gonna be using, I know which end to even out. And this end here, I'm gonna keep pretty straight and flat. That's looking okay. I can see the twist is coming in here. So I'm gonna bring this side down to give it a bit more of a straight look. I'm constantly checking as I work. To see how that's going and that's looking a lot better already. It's not essential right now because I will be flipping it over. I do want those circles on in my bowl, um, but it's just good practice. It's good practice to start with a flat template. So that's the first start of your uh, um, spoon template. Okay, next thing is to draw on your template. So I've got my template here. Again, in a future video, I will show you how I make my templates and where I get my templates from. Uh, but uh, for now, we're just gonna draw it on here. Now you wanna make sure you you leave yourself a little bit of space here and a little bit of space here. That leaves you space for error. That leaves you space to adjust and change if you needed to, as you're cutting through, you might find a knot you didn't anticipate with a much deeper root um, that you can move around. But generally, it's just, again, good practice. And we can always cut that out. Uh, you can always ax it off or use a saw to cut through. So I'm just lining it up. I'm avoiding the knots here and here. So that will give me a slight cross grain as well on the handle, which I'm not fussed at at all. That will be quite nice still. That worrying shouldn't affect anything. And then I'm just drawing around in a pencil. I'm using a watercolor pencil. I have found um, after finding on another YouTube channel uh, someone used a watercolour pencil on wood and it was so much better than a normal graphite pencil and it really really is especially if that wood is wet and you struggle to get anything on it. I don't like using pen in case the pen bleeds through for a couple of layers um, that's just me being again picky but you could always use permanent marker. Felt it pen I've used in the past isn't too bad, but again, you run the risk of it 
coming through onto the wood and if you don't have if you don't cut too deep then you have got that issue that could arise so that's me drawing around there um, I will add as well uh, don't worry too much about the lines on here it provides me with a straight idea uh, so when I'm carving I, I know if I wanted to put a ridge in there that's where my straight is Whoop. apologies there winds picking up a little bit I know where to put uh, my line there these are again ideas for carving I can take the front out I can put a dip in there whatever I needed to do so all marked out on there that's my spoon what we're gonna do now is put in our safety cuts and our safety cuts aren't for you to say it keep your fingers safe or anything the safety cuts are to stop us cutting through into the bowl and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut through to the edge of the drawing on this side and on this side and you want to put your cuts where the pencil or where, where your template comes in at an angle this kind of angle not this this now imagine with wood grain it's lots of long straight lines now if you're carving up into that those lines will split and they'll open up if you're carving over it you're just going to get a nice straight cut down um, again we'll go into this in further detail another time this is just a good introduction but as a rule of thumb if it's a concave curve you're taking out that part and leaving that edge then that's where you want to put your cut on most spoons that's the only real cuts you'll need to worry about on this front profile occasionally you get a bit of a curve in there um, into the handle or maybe into the spoon bowl itself that then again you would want that but this is quite a downwards flow into that air, into that gully there so that's the only place I'm gonna put the cuts so let's just cut that down and these sorts of things it's always better to be conservative than over the top keep checking I'm not going too far again as well as you're cutting keep your blade straight you don't want to have an angle to it because you might find out that as you're cutting down with your axe later you end up taking the entire thing in two or cutting the entire thing in two because you've given it too much cut on two on either side and they've met you have ruined it so that's all I'm going to give for now. Oh no, do you know what? Change my mind. I'm going to go a little bit further. There's a bit of sawdust in the way. I thought I was further down than I wanted to be. There. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Okay. So I've left a tiny bit near to my blur, near to my line. I would much rather personally take that off slowly with a knife to make sure I've got a good shape. Some people go right up to the line. Those that have very confident axe skills. Myself, I'm not that confident with it. I, I'm confident enough to use it, but I'm not going to get any huge detail off of my rough outs and my uh, template and my spoon blanks here. So that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to do the same on the other side. One on each side and like I said these are safety cuts so it means that as you come down with your axe on either side you're going to hit that point and then you will feel that with the axe and you will slow down with your with your muscle there you'll slow down with your cut it will hopefully stop you from going too far because if you go in that will you will not be able to fire to follow that line and that curve it's just going to go straight across and cut off that lovely bowl So now it's axing time. When you're axing now, you need to think about where the weak spots are going to become. Where, when you're cutting, is it going to become thinnest and weakest? So for me, looking at this, this handle here is the thinnest part. So it is going to be the weakest part. 
So to start with, I'm going to start carving at the bowl. And although that means that I'm going to be carving a bit higher than I would like to, it's going to give me more stability here. I'll just be careful. It's only a tiny little bit. So I'm going to come in on these thin edges first, slowly, slowly, until I get that, that to that line. And I'm not going to cross the line. I'm just going to get to that line. Same on the other side. Just there. Then we're going to turn it up the other way. And we're going to come in little by little. See, that's splitting there a little bit. I went a bit too heavy handed. It happens. It does happen. It happens to the best of us that have been doing this for a little while now. I've been carving spoons now for, I want to say, four or five years. I can't quite remember now. Top tip for this part as well, when you start coming in at the angle, you're going to risk slipping. Now's a good time to be laying it down. It's a good, good time if you've got a little bit of a wedge taken out of your block like I have, or you can always add one. You can come in there. Again, and a tip to get to is have a look very flat so you can see on both sides how flat that edge is. It's very easy to come in at an angle and think you've got it and then when you go to turn it over this spoon is a lot bigger than that spoon. You're working very much in 2D at the moment. We will work on this side then we will work on that side. And those 2D, bring it into a 3D. Okay, now because I've weakened that edge already, I'm gonna go straight into cutting down here, and that just provides a bit of support. Yeah. See, I've done it there. I've come in, I can see that. So if I hold that up straight, you can see I can see almost like a shadow of the wood there, so I'm going to come in. There. That's a bit better. So, that's that part. I'm happy with that. Although I'm not quite up to the line here, I don't want to put any more stress on this. So I will be doing that part with a knife a little bit later. And this part here, I'm just going to cut off with the saw in a little while once I finish cutting everything else out. So now I'm back down here. And these cuts don't have to be quite so firm or so precise because you're just going straight down. quite a lot to take off on this side but again I'm not being too heavy-handed because I don't want to put any undue strain on the neck there and also I came very close there to bringing myself down and cutting into that bowl which is not something I would like to do and you know what I think I'm going to use this edge again
it just takes the strain off of the spoon itself so that you've got you don't run the risk of where of uh, going wrong there I'm gonna do this side There's never any shame in going back to something as well. This is a hobby. You don't need to be a master at your craft. You need to enjoy it. There's never any shame in thinking, oh, I've got the wrong angle there. I can go back and do that again. Because you might just open up a pathway you didn't know about, like I did there. As I was coming in, I could see my cuts were gonna come straight through into my template there. So I just swapped it back round again. I'm going back downhill, like I said, into that concave. It's not going to end up splitting the wood. Now, because I've got so much to take off there, I think I'm going to go back to my baton. But instead of using something to hit it with, I'm just going to line it up and give it a good tapping. This then limits the strain again on there. It's a, such a common thing when spoon carvers are axing or doing those first cuts to cut through and completely ruin the spoon by taking the bowl off from here. This is always the weakest spot on a spoon. So that's taken off a bit of that. So back to my axe now for those smaller cuts. It's also worth mentioning, forgive the seagulls, it's also worth mentioning when I'm using an axe, I'm putting very little muscle into the downward force. All my muscle is just bringing it up and down. I'm not forcing the axe down, I'm letting the weight of the axe do it for me. So, all I'm doing there is just trying to weaken this spot here. I'm not fussed about ripping anything too badly now because my knife will be handling the rest in a little while this is a blank it's rough it's a basic shape not looking too bad all the way around. Next thing now is the side profile. Okay so I've done the same thing for the side profile so we've got that on the top now we've got it on the side. I've already put my stop cut into there as well again on that concave um, curve there. The bottom is all the right way so I don't need to put a cut on there. I could put a cut here on the handle, it's very slight, but what I'll probably do now for the axing out job is just leave that straight, but again that, that gives me an idea of where to go for. 
Um, I'd much rather do that with a knife because if I go slightly too far with the axe, I run the risk of leaving a mark on there, which I'll then have to try and cut out afterwards with the knife. And it's very much the same sort of process. Again, I'm just going to go down with the uh, axe, come back up with the axe, and then do the outside as well. And then just make sure it looks okay all the way around. Um, I won't bore you with all of that. We've gone through it already. Um, let's see how it ends. Okay, so I'm nearly there with the blank, but it's just occurred to me, these things happen. So, going back to showing you where the template is. This is always a difficult part with carving. It took me a long time and some advice from a fellow uh, spoon carver, an extremely talented guy, um, who I met at a spoon gathering to give me some hints on how to do this. Because obviously, as I said, you do not want to be axing here. Your fingers are there. So, and again, you'll be putting so much stress on this, it, it will snap like a like kindling. So, here's a little trick that was taught to me. What you want to do is take your hand as far away from where you're going to axe as possible. And now is when you're going to axe through the grain. And this is where your sharp axe really comes into its own. And all I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be changing ever so slightly my axing method. Instead of going straight up, straight down, I'm going to be drawing it across. And that's a slight dig in. And I'm going to be coming down into it. And like a knife, you're then slicing it. And as you can see, that's not chewing up the wood. It's cutting through very nicely, very slowly through it and you get that angle. Your hand is well out of the way. The only thing you risk is if you happen to miss the block, you're gonna go into your leg, but that's just pure stupidity if you do that. That's your own fault. I'm just gonna come in a little bit more. I'm not gonna to go too far, because again, using a knife is always better, but that takes the most part out of it. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much our spoon blanks. The only other thing I might do is cut the top and the bottom edges off. But to be honest, I think I've changed my mind on that one. I'm probably gonna cut them with a knife. It's nice and thin. It's not gonna to be too difficult to cut with a knife. Um, again, the same on the top. And if you cut with a nice sharp knife, you're gonna get a nice, clean, almost shiny surface. And that is so much more preferable to the, the rough cut um, open ends that you get with a saw. And I'd have to cut across it anyway. So it's only tiny bits. I think I'm gonna leave them. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed as well, I axed it the wrong way around. <laughs> it happens, you go into autopilot sometimes. I did say I was gonna ax it with the bark side up um, and I didn't. So this one will most likely have a different grain, although it does look like, as you can see there, I'm getting a nice rounded grain. As I carve into it, it should come out so that you get these edges and a straighter line through there, but we'll see what happens. Um, every spoon is different, really. You really never know what's gonna happen. And that's another big advice I can give you is, don't be too set on a template, don't be too set on the way your spoon's gonna go, because the wood will always show you what it wants to do that's one of the beauties of this hobby follow the wood don't force it because forcing it will mean that's where you'll get weak spots where it'll be um it won't work as well and it just loses its magic if you forced something into it uh into its space so uh, but yeah whoops that's that's this part thanks for joining me on this first video the next one we're going to be getting the knives out our um, spoon knife and our sloyd knife. I'll be talking through why I choose those tools and other tools you could possibly use as well. And then uh, we'll get the rough, rough parts done and show you how to go from there. Thanks for joining. If you're liking it so far, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, share it on every social media you possibly can do uh, because you love me, obviously, and uh, it's going to be you know, a great help for me to get my name out there a little bit further and to help budding carvers out there who want to get started but don't know how.
Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.